the killer in the and we'll have, we'll need to give your viewers a little background on the crime itself but uh, the killer was sending in notes taunting the police on the crime mm. and uh one of the most of them were cut and paste you know ransom night type right notes. but one of them was uh and handwriting disguised but one was undisguised and it said turning myself in on january 29th had my fun at the police signed black dahlia avenger and i looked at the handwriting and it's my father's handwriting. Oh, no. And I, I mean, you know your parents' handwriting. Your listeners know their parents' yeah. handwriting. And I knew dad's. And I said, but still, I said, there's no way. Is he pretending to be, you know? I said, damn, I'm going to have to. And then the other thing, of course, that became clear was that a surgeon actually, it was the crime was committed by you a surgeon. You could tell that it was. The body was cut in half surgically. It was an actual operation bisected at the waist. Um, and, and as far as the evidence, I mean, there's just so much that we don't have. I'll just try and give your listeners a few heads up on. on uh, so you got a surgeon. That certainly limits the right. that suspect it pool, doesn't it? <laughs> Skilled surgeon. Uh, and then uh, I was fortunate enough some years ago to have a, actually have an opportunity to have a cadaver dog, Buster, the cadaver dog, <laughs> uh, do actually a search of the uh, – outside and the interior of the basement right a lot of the we believe a lot of the body there may be bodies buried in the basement really? in fact there are official LAPD reports that I was able to get that show they were in the DA's office was actually right. investigating to see if there was any digging in the basement to find bodies mm -hmm. they never went out but they were asking questions about did you see any digging <laughs> they got got a hold of a plumber who had been there and they said did you see any digging in the basement when you were there oh, and um, anyway the Buster goes to the basement. He alerts at four different locations for he, positive for human remains. Now, they don't alert on dead rats or anything. Right. I mean, it's specific. Right. Uh, we collected soil samples from the exterior on a couple of his alerts and actually had them analyzed. They came back positive for human remains. Oh, my God. So, you know, we've got that. Right. Uh, another dramatic <clears throat> link, uh, these doors just kept opening for me, was uh, I mentioned that sadly that she was uh, – they found uh, fecal matter in her stomach. Oh, yeah, I remember, yeah. Forced. And, yeah. and actually, I, I went to uh, UCLA, and I went to the special collections section there, and I got into Frank Lloyd Wright Jr.'s, or Lloyd Wright's uh, papers. And in there, there's a file, Dr. George Hodel. And oh, in that file yeah. are receipts for 50-pound bags of manure and cement. Well, the body, Elizabeth Short's body, was transported from the Franklin house, mm -hmm. was the location of the murder, to the crime scene, right. and the posed, and the bags were left near the body. So you've got this manure bag, uh, oh, you know, and yeah. this was, and the date on the receipt is 10 days before, the, they were purchased <laughs> 10 days before the murder, January 10th, you know, so you've right. got, right. so you've got physical <clears throat> evidence actually connecting to, from the Franklin house to the crime scene. You know, and it's just it just it's just amazing. Um, and then of course how the got, evidence kept it kept building. Steve Lopez comes out with a you know I give him a heads up on my book coming out, right. and he does a quick he doesn't read it, but he goes quick you know uh, sh shift through it and says, right. well uh, you know uh, and he writes a couple of articles uh, about the same time as the book comes out, and. Much to his surprise, he go well. He goes first. He goes to LAPD and says, "Hey, there's this hotel." He says, "His daddy killed a black dahlia." You know? Right, right. He said, "Go away. We we don't talk about unsolved open cases." You know, this is right. what, how many years later? Right, right. Decades <laughs> later, and uh, he says, "Okay." So then he goes to Steve Cooley, who's the DA of LA County at the time. He says, "Hey, this hotel." And he says, "You know, his father's the black dahlia killer." <laughs> and, uh, and Cooley says, well, I'm not spending a dime of taxpayers' money oh on an old case like that. He says, but, you know, there is a box in the uh, vault downstairs on the Black Dahlia. Would you like to see that? Oh, my. You're like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Lopez says, yeah. They go down. They open the vault. He gives them the box. Lopez goes upstairs to the DA's office, opens up the file, out f falls a picture of Dr. George Lodell. You're like, oh. And he, says, <laughs> and, and he says, oh, my God. He says he was a suspect. So he goes through quickly, and he finds out, you know, that there were some transcripts and stuff. So he does a quick and dirty second article on it. He's got a column in the in the L.A. Times, <clears throat> and that's basically it. So then I say, well, hell, 
I go to Cooley and I say, hey, you know, can I, can I look at it? You know, can I make some copies? He says, well, I let him. I guess I should let you. So he, I spend the whole day copying everything, you know, about hmm. f- 500 pages of material. Oh, my gosh. And I go back and I spend the next three months going through it. And what do I discover? So Dad was the chief prime suspect all along from almost the get-go. Uh, he, of course, he was a surgeon. Right. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> come to find out that 18 detectives from LAPD and the DA's office form a task force. Hmm. They pick up George Hodell and they take him down to the Hall of Justice and question him. And while he's there, they break into the Soden Franklin house. And tap and they, it. And they, yeah, well, they put actually hard microphones in the walls. Oh, wow. Not, not a phone tap, but actual <laughs> right, right. microphones in the walls. Like they a James the, Bond movie. <laughs> just like a James Bond. They, they, they run the hard line down through the basement, right. connect it to the pack tel line, telephone lines, right. run them to all the way to Hollywood Station, oh my where God. I worked for 17 years. Right. In the basement, 18 detectives, a task force, two, two-man teams, 24-7, around the clock for six weeks. And they get all of these amazing uh There's a bunch of quotes and, up yeah, on the, on and, the and screen. Just, we'll, we'll read just a few. Yeah, please. Got go through all of them. Uh, th- and these are George Hodel. These are live conversations, him talking to... Uh, a German, actually, I, I identified as uh, Baron Haringa, who was a close friend of his for decades. He was there. He's talking to. He says, uh, this is the best payoff I've seen between law enforcement. You don't have the right connections made at the DA's office. Don't confess ever. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, suppose and I did kill the Black Dahlia. We couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead. Oh, my God. Well, they investigated Dad two years earlier, LAPD, for the suspected murder of his secretary on an overdose. <laughs> Her name was R- Ruth Spalding. He says, the FBI were over to see me three weeks ago, blah, blah, blah. Don't say anything on the phone. I think it's tapped. I've got your number. I'll call you. Well, he thought the phones were tapped, but he had no idea that it was actually wired for sound. Right? <laughs> they tricked him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, then he said, and then he says, I'm in trouble, Black Dahlia, Passport. The police have pictures of me and that girl. I thought I destroyed all of them. Mm. Uh, and then he goes on uh, to actually talk about murdering his secretary two years earlier. Put a pillow over her head and covered her with a blanket, got a taxi, called Georgia Street receiving, expired at 1239. They thought there was something fishy. Anyway, now they may have figured it out. Maybe I did kill my secretary. Oh and, and on and on. Interestingly, through the years, after the crime, after the Dahlia murder, I'll read you some of these, um, what, what actually the high-ranking LAPD and uh, other uh, officers said about the crime. Now, these are in- independent statements they made of each other separately. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, let's hear so, some. So Parker says, you know, was, we identified the Black Dahlia suspect. He was a doctor. Okay, so he says that. Uh, Thad Brown, chief of detectives, is with his drinking buddy, um, Jack Webb, <laughs> of, you know, Dragnet <laughs> Right, fan. right. And he tells, Je- he tells Webb, the Black Dahlia case was solved. It was a doctor who lived on Franklin Avenue in Hollywood. <laughs> okay. Now, maybe it was another doctor on Franklin, but I don't I think say, so. That narrowed it down. <laughs> yeah. And then we have it, Lieutenant um, uh, Frank Jemison from the DA's office. We know who the Black Dahlia killer was. He was a doctor, but we didn't have enough to put him away. Yeah, they did, but, you know. And uh, then finally we have the undersheriff of L.A. County, uh, J- uh, James Downey, says the Black Dahlia case was solved. It'll never come out. Suspect was a doctor they all knew in Hollywood involved in abortions. So these are all <laughs> independent statements made 